very good morning myself dr jofrata professor it department rm engineering college uh, in this video series we will discuss about software testing uh, let's see software testing fundamentals so mainly we will focus on uh, what exactly the definition of software testing what its meaning then what are the software structure what are the various levels of software testing uh, we will address these kind of different uh, level of software software uh then what are the major problems and uh, myths surrounding about this software testing similarly purpose and objectives of software testing uh what is the role of software testing or a role of software tester then uh, what are the main goal of software testing uh then how exactly we can do for prevention uh, what are the preventive measures we can take before uh, deploying the product and uh, independent testing what is the necessity of independent testing as well as its value uh, then definitely we should talk about the phases of uh, mental i mean uh, mental life of the uh, software tester then what are the various methods possible methods available to do uh, software testing uh, what are the laws face uh, about software testing and the limit uh limitations what are the limitations or, or, or the ability of the tester all kind of things we will discuss here and uh, uh, finally we will try to find out a uh, system model for software testing uh, let's talk about software concepts uh, usually what do you mean by software we know software refers to set of instructions right that is fed into the computer system in terms of programs and it is uh, actually process this some hardware components and find it's going to give some output right uh, so we'll see numerous example let's see we, we will install some antivirus on our computer or uh, mobile device or whatever so that antivirus itself is software right similarly suppose we are using a microsoft word document for editing the document or creating the document that is also some under the software similarly we have a video file if you want to play it we are using a, several different types of media player is there right so this media player uh, that we used to play multi the file that also called the software so what i am trying to say is uh, depending on the application or the implementation area of implementation we can uh, divide the software into three major categories one is a system software application software and another one is utility software we can see it in the uh, diagram very clearly so we have these three categories system software application software and utility software so system software um, actually these software they directly allow the user to interact with the hardware components of the computer system that's what they used to say uh, so like uh, best example is operating system we know that operating system is the main program right it is a resource manager we used to call because uh, it manages resources like suppose we need a printer then you should assign some scheduling and priority for printer similarly controlling the input and output device all kind of stuff happen with the help of operating system that's why primarily we we'll call it as a resource manager and this operating system also written in a set of instruction right so automatically it is also come under software similarly we have a language processor definitely uh, a human language can't able to understand by the uh system right so definitely we need some interpreter right so we need a proper language processor in order to do the better human uh, machine interaction so that is why we are having the language processor that is also one of the example then definitely we have a device drivers uh then uh, bios that is basic input output system these are all written in some assembly level language or machine level language codes right so these also at the end of the day it is come under the uh, instruction set of instructions so it is also called as a software so whatever software uh, instruction closely directly involving with the system hardware we can call it as a system software okay so just example as i said earlier operating system language processor device driver bios all kind of things so in this especially language processor it acts as a barrier between a computer and the human so we will come under the assembly language programming compiler interpreter all kind of stuff come under this language processor right then the, as i said earlier the device drivers they're mainly uh, here also we have a device program uh, that is act as a interface between the various input and output devices so that's uh, that's the device driver then uh, basic input output system again it is a small firmware uh, that control the peripheral or uh, the input and output devices attached to the system okay so these are the things then uh, when we talk about the application software uh, these are the basic software used to run to accomplish a particular action um, or we can call it as a particular task 
okay so these are the dedicated software to perform some simple or unique task okay for example a single software cannot serve to both the reservation system as well as banking system right so for banking systems especially we need to create a banking specific software similarly for uh, any uh, depending on the application we can create a different uh, different uh, uh, application softwares okay so based on the category we have two categories one is a general purpose application software another one is a specific public application software let's talk about the general purpose application software uh, they are somewhat we can say it is a built in okay so ready to use and manufactured by company or someone and it can be used in different different ways for example microsoft excel it is developed by microsoft and it can be used to prepare excel sheet right so we can uh, use it similarly vlc media player it is used to play audio or video file and uh, photoshop like, let's talk about the adobe photoshop so that is defined by one adobe company they uh, developed it and it can be used for creating uh, photo animations all kind of stuff right then specific purpose application software uh, from the name itself is specific uh, that is it's a customized one so custom made and it is mostly used in the real time or uh, business environment let us say ticket reservation system healthcare management system payroll management system a hotel management system numerous application we can take so there are a particular application specific one so it is called as a uh, specific purpose application software then apart from this system software the application software we have a, another one software that is a utility software so this utility server they are also performing the daily need tasks like uh, anti antivirus software text editors uh, disk defragmenter tools so these are all uh, we can call it as the utility software because let us take this antivirus software these provide protection to the computer system from uh, we can say it is from unwanted malware as well as viruses right uh, example mcafe all kind of stuff then similarly we can have a disk defragmenter tools so that it is used to analyze the bad sector of the device and we need to rearrange the files in a proper order that can be done with the help of this disk defragmenter tools then we have a text editor it help user to take regular notes and create basic text files even best example is our own notepad which is present in the microsoft okay so these are the major uh, basic concept about the uh, software What we do in software testing? Software testing is the process of evaluating and verifying that a software product or application does what it is supposed to do. See, we are creating software for a specific purpose, right? Whether the purpose is done in a proper way, that we have to verify, right? that we have to evaluate. So that's what happens in software testing process. The benefit of testing includes preventing defects, reducing development cost, and improving performance. That is, uh, when we talk about the software testing, uh, suppose there is a bug, and if it is unnoticed, means what will happen? It will create severe damage. For example, there is a scanning facility. Let us take a healthcare system. So we, so the scanner, everything, they will perform some, under some uh, particular set of uh, codes, right? Instructions. Suppose there is any malfunction due to its uh, there is any malfunction due to error or bug in the software, what will happen? It will create a severe damage. It will show unnecessary data. Automatically, we can't able to detect the exact uh, cause of the particular problem or it, what, what exactly the problem of uh, a particular patient. These kind of uh, things happen in uh, the IU stages. So, uh, this is one just example. Similarly, suppose we are launching a rocket and uh, uh, there is any bug, means even with a small bet, what will happen, it will create a million amount of damage, not only in terms of cost, in terms of human uh, life, there is several possibilities, okay. So let's see some common aspects in software testing. So before that, the role of software testing, uh, I'll be, as we discussed, the primary role is we need to do verification as well as validation. What do you mean by verification? Are we doing things right? Whether the process is right, that we need to check, right? So that is come under verification. Where in validation, are we doing the right things? Uh, based on the requirements, we are creating the product or not. That is come under validation. So verification and validation, these two terms are very important in terms of uh, defining the primary role of the software testing. Okay, then 
so let's talk about the various aspects of uh, testing the quality uh, software and its types. Okay.